So welcome to It's Not All About The Numbers, the leadership podcast that doesn't just focus on the bottom line. Hi, my name is Chris, and that is Mike. Hi, everyone. And today, uh, we will be doing a special. Uh, this is a holiday special because it's um, it's not unthinkable for us to take a holiday, but it is unthinkable for us not to deliver an episode for you every week. So this week, we're going to be running... Um, back through the podcast so far and um, we're going to be pulling out some of the themes some of the um the main things that we've noticed about most if not all of our guests um what really makes them you know good at what they do what makes them interesting to be on the podcast and um, a bit of a reflection really about leadership traits um i would say and how maybe getting to the top um is based on a few themes that we've seen um today would you say that's a fair summary yeah I, I, absolutely i think I, I just literally as you were talking looking to see we've done thir- there's, we've published 36 podcasts as of this moment and and i think there are some really strong themes that have come out um that bear just sort of doing a bit of a, written a bit of a think about 30 30 odd podcasts i think we're um up to about 60 countries there is i think slovenia's in there uh estonia uh jersey as well i don't know who, who i know on jersey but yeah you know the, it's a real breadth of um sort of speaker that we've had on or co-host as we like to call them um but there are some common themes right for sure um which we're going to sort of dig into a little bit today um we won't count them yet because we're not sure how many there there really are but um Shall we start with with one of the sort of one of the things that we've observed most of all? Um, I think sometimes leaders, you know, pe- certainly when you're in your early career, you sort of see leadership as almost like a bit of a, a climb to the top. Um, people talk about a career ladder, um, but is it true to talk about it in those terms? I, I think in in some organisations, then then it still is a bit like that. There still is a hierarchy, but I think the theme that comes out from the people that we've spoken to, and and you know, the reason that we've spoken to the people that we've spoken to is that we find them inspirational in some way, right? We we've seen them, or we've spoken to them, or we know them, and, and we find them inspirational. And I think where where some of that comes from on reflection is the, the journey that they've been on. It's not just that they've had a climb to the top and they've gone straight from you know straight through an organisation to to, to become become the, the top the top person really so yeah definitely I think you know the journey I think is really apparent I think in most of the conversations we've had you know whether it's and, and I think it's also the un, unexpected part of the journey um I definitely you know when I first started out I was sort of thinking I have a career ladder that I need to step through. And if I just simply take the next position up, the next position up, the next position up, I'm going to get to where I want to go. Um, But I think that is just wrong. You know, it's wrong for, certainly wrong for me. And I think all of the the leaders that we've spoken to, it was, it would, it was probably, you know, implied in everything that they said that they can, can kind of found their way. And there were, there was success and failure along the way. Um, they could not see the path, you know, that if they reflect on their career today, you know, it definitely wasn't the path that they thought they were going to go on. Right. No, I absolutely agree. I think there's two bits to that, which is the, the sliding doors moments that everybody has, you know, that kind of like path path not taken or decision made and and the path that it takes you on. You've got circumstance. So, you know, what actually happens, you've, you've referred a few times to the, like the, the fraud, Mm-hmm. Um, that that instigated a change for you, and I, th- I think that most people that we've spoken to have something like that. I think the the reflection that I've got is also the the, the active decisions made to say actually I don't want that. Yeah. So I was just thinking about you know I was in the civil service for a while, and I got to a point where I got I was moving into senior management in the in the civil service. I had a secondment, tried it for a bit. And then went back to my previous job and thought, do you know what? I don't want to do that. I don't want to carry on on that path. Yeah. Um, and I and I think that 
it's being brave enough to make those decisions, I think, is another common theme. Yeah. Not just saying, this is the path that I'm on, I've got to stick with it, but actually saying, you know, the, the thing that I like is that over there. Um, we chatted to Simon Bullmore a few weeks ago, who'd been, uh, so when I first met Simon, he was a training expert. Yeah. And then he was a marketing expert. And then he ran his own agency. And now he's a, a, a fractional um can't remember the the C is it's a fractional C yeah. C something yeah um and that needs bravery as well as it's interesting as well though right not not you know that that those those people I find most interesting yeah you know, what I mean by that statement you know it, it's almost like the people who are still they're, they're self aware but they're searching for something on that journey they they are the most interesting types of people and i imagine as a leader they're the ones they're, they're the leader that you're more likely to follow rather than saying you know this person's got every step right yeah um they and and you know i kind of understand their career path it's actually you know they 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 they're they're probably easy to follow but are they inspiring to follow that sort of leader it's the leader where they've sort of you know, had to tangent out of a crisis or, you know, something that made them self-aware meant that they had to make a change. I think where it's 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 most interesting, I think a lot of people on that journey as well who we've spoken to have been very reflective. So, you know, they haven't just, I don't know, had a 10-step plan at the start and, and nailed it. They've actually every step of that ten step. They've been reflective and they've been happy to course correct. I, I, I sorry, I, I agree, and I think it links to something that that you talk about in Gen CFO world around ag- agility and agile mind, mindset around. And, and for me, what that really means is that reflection on what you you're doing. So, is it working? Yes, carry on. Is it working? No, do something different. And I think that. The agile mindset for me breaks down to that. Yeah, and, and we, we've seen that in spades across the the conversations we've had. Yeah, I, especially you know, I remember talking. We were talking to Walter, and Walter's in like the software development space. And when you know, I I started out in accountancy, right? But then I was very much working with IT professionals for a long time. And you know, agile is a bit of a buzzword. It's a bit of a cult actually in that world, but reflections and retros you know looking back over what you've just done either in two weeks or four weeks or a whole program it's built into the way that you work and from a a leadership culture point of view i think the easiest way to describe culture is what you do on a regular basis and if i am you know following a agile process if I am planning work, doing work, then reflecting on what went well and didn't, and then correcting again. If you're doing that on a regular basis, it you know your that is your culture, that is your leadership style. Whereas you know, compare that to you know a, a fairly ordered, controlled kind of career path and career approach. Um, it's you know it's arguably going to be less interesting. But actually, the 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 people that we we're talking to or not talking to are probably going to be less less inspiring, and um, which is why they're not on on the podcast, right? Yeah, completely. And I, and I think sort of building on that, you know, you mentioned you mentioned um, Walter there, and one of the things I remember from that conversation is just just the kind of passion and excitement for the kind of whole community that's built around the the, the environment, the or the the work that he's doing and i think that that's another thing that comes through across all of the podcasts really if you if you think about it it's the leadership is a team sport it's not just about this single person and everybody that we've spoken to is open to the group that they're working with or a commu- wider community providing insight and inspiration in the decisions that the leader is making it's not a closed shop yeah. and i think that openness and that that community element is you know again it's there across most of the conversations that we've had yeah i think that there's a direct link there isn't there between you know being passionate and the journey you go on right because if you you know if you don't have much passion for your career then you're probably not going to take the risks in that journey 
and you're not going to challenge the journey. You're not going to, you know, try to course correct and make sure that you, you know, ultimately get to where you want to get to that, that passion that you have. But I think there is something so addictive about hearing someone talk who is passionate. And I, and I think passionate is a bit of an overused word, but when you hear, you know, the commitment that people have to, you know, their goals, their North star, whatever you want to call it, when you hear the the journey they've been on to get there, when you hear the sort of risks that they've been able to take, it's all driven from, from that passion um, and I think it is a little bit of an overused word in sort of coaching circles. There I criticize the coaching world because people sort of say, well, you know, what's your passion? Because that's what you need to do. And it's like, it's not that easy. Yeah, I, so I, I think a different word is maybe the the inspiration. It, it, the people that we've spoken to have come across as inspirational in the way that they present present themselves. Yeah, I think there's something else in there around. I mean, you said it in a previous podcast when we were talking about your career around I'm I'm doing this job and I don't necessarily feel like I'm going to retire from it because you enjoy it so much and it is part of your life in effect in, in effect yeah. and I wonder how many people that we've spoken to across this series let's call it a series um that would say the same thing because I, I imagine that there's quite a few who don't see like a an end date that it's like oh yeah I'm going to retire when I'm 55 65 75 whatever it is yeah I yeah, I imagine a lot of them would rather scale back than retire. You know, it's definitely not turning off the journey that they're on, which says to me that, you know, the chances are you're on the wrong journey or you're doing it for very yeah. sort of fixed reasons and and not necessarily enjoying that journey. I mean, I've got friends and relations that are work in the police force and actually from 10 years out from retirement and you don't retire when you're old in the police if you join it you know, join straight from school or university, you, you're retiring at, in your 50s. Yeah. And people are counting down from 10 years away. Yeah. When's retirement? I, I, I can't imagine living like that. <laughs> no, no. I, I, and, you know, it's, uh, I don't know whether it's for some people or whether it's for, not for others. Um, I, I definitely see passion being part of that, you know, the, 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 the energy, if you like, to the journey, um, and and you know, going back to to what happened with me, I don't think I was passionate about my career at all in my twenties. I was trying to find a way, um, trying to keep it interesting, you know, but I wasn't passionate about it. The thing that really triggered it was, uh, you know, again, we talked about in the past, but the the fraud where I just it turned everything on its head for me. It was like this is how bad it can get. Yeah, the, the the situation that I was living with um, in my career could be so bad because of, you know, poor performance, whatever, poor technology, that that's, that really did plant a seed for what I'm doing today, but it ignited something in me to make a change. Um, and, and it's funny, I don't know where that passion comes from. I don't think you leave university necessarily with that strength of passion. You know, maybe you have a big goal, but a goal is not the same as as passion because you know it's it's about the journey it's about the risk you're prepared to take it's about the change you're prepared to go on uh, yeah absolutely i mean the go the goal could be i want to retire by the time i'm 55 yeah i think but, but, steve bartlett i think yeah. famously said he wanted a you know a, a, a range rover he wanted you know a, a hot girlfriend and he wants to be a millionaire by the time he's 23 or whatever you know they're they're goals great great so you've got those goals great yeah. but i think what we're talking about is how much you enjoy getting there yes and and you know you can change your goal but you've still got to, you know you only have to you know ricky ricky gervais um is ricky gervais's lines on um human existence you know i know that there's such a small fraction of a percentage chance that i even exist yeah so actually we've got to make the best of it you know we've got really got to enjoy what we're doing and if if all i'm doing is aiming at that goal and i'm hating every moment of it what the hell is the point yeah i i do i do wonder about that i i, I agree with what you're saying but i do wonder whether that's a fairly modern or a or a developed world view i think I mean, so because, yeah, so. because you know, when I first started my career, it wasn't about happiness. You know, people weren't bothered about okay. doing their sort of, you know, net promoter scores and getting the employment surveys. It was all about getting the job done. And you were kind of lucky 
you know, to have the paycheck for the work you've done. Right now, it's about flexibility. It's about, you know, welfare. It's about so many other things that maybe have been brought about by the generations, you know, who are coming through, who value that more. But I'm definitely benefiting from that. Oh. 100 percent. i mean what's going through my head is that i'm pretty sure the guys that were working down the pits and in the mills <laughs> weren't necessarily thinking wow this is great i'm really enjoying my journey but you know you're right it is it's very much something that we can benefit from now is that that change in how work works i'm sure but the thing is the interesting point about the mines right i, I i'm sure there were a few who were highly motivated and passionate about going down the mines because they were, you know, fueling the country or they were fueling their towns, you know. And and I think, you know, it's it, it, passion can exist in the smallest of places, but it's whether it's a whole career change or not. Absolutely, and I think that 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 kind of links to another theme of the of the people that we've spoken to is a number of them being prepared to make a change or take a risk and, mm. and do something different with it within their journey, you know, to, to stretch the mine analogy to the to breaking point, you know, you've decided to step out of the mine and do something completely different, open a bakery, whatever it is, yeah. you know, it, it's being prepared to make that change and take that risk because I think people can have aspiration and have a, a, a passion about something but still not be prepared to take the risk to make the change. Yeah, and I, I think and, and with a lot of the people that we've spoken to, and I think you know, there's a lot of unsung heroes out there who take risk, who make change, and they get no praise for it. I think sometimes these people have, there's very little incentive for them to, to take that risk. Yes. You know, they're not going to get a bonus for it. They're not going to necessarily get a pay rise or um, they're, they're not going to get a promotion for it. They just have to do it. Like it's something within them where they're saying, okay, I, I I need to make a change for whatever this passion is, whatever the North Star is. And and they do it not for public accolade, but just because, you know, there is this strong personal motivation to, to do it. And yet Yolana, who we spoke to um, at the summit, had this incredible journey from you know, communist Romania through to being, you know, a CFO of L'Oreal in New York, you know, it, incredible journey. And I think the risks and the changes that she made along that path are a, a kind of example of that. Um, you know, she 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 got the rewards in the end, but in the moment, it was all about, you know, that, that sort of the, almost like, I, I can't not do this, yeah. you know. So I... I, I... So I personally recognise that kind of trait of I can't not. So it's almost like I can't not say that this isn't working. I can't not point point this out. Yeah. I, I was listening to the radio on the way over to, for us meeting up today, and um, there was a guy on there talking about the general election, and but specifically around ele- uh, the party adverts that yeah. have been put out, yeah. and how there's no regulation around. The party ad, party political adverts, the regulation around soap powder adverts and around gambling adverts, but not about party political. So he's he's come up with a, so he's his passion is t- tackling that. So he's getting people to sign up to a uh, the parties to sign up to a, a declaration saying they're not going to lie in their adverts. Um, wow. yeah. and it's called it electoral advertising reform uk or reform electoral advertising uk politicians not lying you know <laughs> but but it's it's, it's inc- but he gets no benefit from it yeah. to the point to your point he gets absolutely there's no reward for it in him other than it's the right thing to do yeah and i think a lot of people sort of you know call these passion projects right they they sort of they have to sit alongside your current career um and that uh, that that is how Gen CFO started, you know, my current business, it was a passion project that sat alongside my career, but that passion project grew and I had to, you know, I felt like I had to do something about it. The, the, the risk and the change commitment for me was generated by the fraud. You know, I just, I just felt there there was a shift in me where it went, I am either part of the problem or part of the solution in my current profession. And that's a, 
massive statement you know that one person who's who's unqualified in the institution's eyes yeah uh, you know to to be anything in this argument that it's like i need to make a change because the the impact of fraud corporate fraud on my team on me on the profession as a whole you know the the sort of trustworthiness of people within the profession it was is a massive issue it still is today right people I, I think i said the other week if i was to do another podcast it would be around you know like a lack of conviction in corporate fraud but but that 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 was the trigger for me i was prepared to take the risk i was prepared to make the change because i just felt like I, I really had to do something i ended up spinning it into a sort of much more positive you know let's be progressive let's let's make transformation let's focus on business excellence you know rather than it being this sort of negative start but that is actually where the the initial risk came from um and i think a, a lot of people might relate to this sort of passion project as a start and that, just sort of building on that, so i think that the change and the risk happens at all kinds of different levels so the level that you've just described there is like massive right it's a big significant thing that you're describing the, f- the fraud triggering a change but I'm just reflecting back on i think it was a conversation we had with Hannah Monroe around how she interviews people for her business. Yeah. And actually the process of interviewing didn't work for them. So they play games with the people that they're interviewing. Yeah. So actually that process, there was a, clearly there's a risk in doing that and doing things differently. It was Rachel Harris. Rachel Harris, Dan. And it was, uh, it was a, wasn't it a burrito game or something? I can't. I, well, clearly, I can't. Re- <laughs> clearly, I can't remember. A, yeah, but I thought it was brilliant. It sorry, was brilliant. sorry, Rachel. Um, but 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 the, the the point in there being that being prepared to change that that process, yeah, was a risk. Yeah, in itself, you know, a, yeah. a risk that the person being coming in is going to think you're mad, yeah. but also a risk that you're not going to get what you need in terms of a traditional structure to make a decision. But yeah. clearly proven, yeah, it works. Yeah, and I think there's something in that about sort of not. It's too grand to say, you know, you're challenging the status quo, right? Well, you're, you're true, but you're just you're just trying to you're trying to do things differently, not for the sake of it. That's what I mean by challenging the status yeah. status quo. You're just trying to do things differently to suit your goals. Yeah. And, and you know, in that case, it was finding the right fit for the team as quickly as possible. It's a, They're a small business. Um, they had hundreds, I think, of applications because she's a bit of a social media star. She does great work. Um, but it's like, how do I get the right recruit quickly? And it's like, well, let's just play a game and see how they interact with each other, you know, um, which I, th- I thought was inspired for a small business. You know, we know that the big consultancies do this. They have the big recruitment days. But why not bring that practice into there? And I, and I think it also starts to demonstrate the culture of an organisation, right? It, you're, you're starting to say, we, we don't do things in the same way as everybody else. We, we think slightly slightly differently. I think I'm just sort of reflecting on some of the work that I've been doing recently and thinking something similar in there around change and doing things differently is about the difference between communication and engagement in a, in a project, So communication for me is that broadcast. Oh, yeah, we're working in the open. We've put put stuff on the internet. And that's like, well, that's great. But actually, it's the difference between that and engagement, which is we've told people what we're doing and we're listening to what they're saying about what we're doing. And I think that that's a change in approach that you can just do in any work and any job is just to listen more and think more uh, about what people are saying. Yeah, and I, I think that's a that's a definitely a common trait. I think with everyone that we've spoken to, that they they're probably very good active listeners. Yeah, like they've they've not said that, but the way that the podcasts actually have gone, yeah, they've they've been able to sort of come in as a co-host rather than us interview them. Yes, we haven't, you know, just a little peek behind the curtain here. We haven't give them loads of questions to go and prep for an answer. They're listening, they're hearing what we're both saying, and they're almost sort of going along with the ride. And then they're bringing in their own sort of points of view. I think that is that active listening skill is a real skill. And it just gets stronger and stronger in in the leadership roles that we've seen. And and I think that that is the difference between leadership and management is that listening, being able to listen, and not only being able to listen, but also being humble enough 
when you're hearing things that don't necessarily chime with your lived experience, that you can adapt to them as well. Yeah. And I think that, that, yeah, that. And I think that the last one that I'd raise on this is that, so we've gone journey, passion, change and risk. I think the other thing that just stands out to me is, is this all seems to add up to authenticity. Yeah. You know, people who are, who are g- genuinely just themselves, right? They're not putting on a work mask. They're not trying to be something else. Um, you know, and I, funnily enough, I, I, as a, a small aside, my son went for an induction for his secondary school this week. And he was in the car and he was starting to do his hair differently. And he even started to sort of talk differently. I don't know what was going on. It's some weird metamorphosis. And I was like, well, just be yourself. Just be yourself. And he was like, no, 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 no. I'm meeting new people. Uh, you know, that I'm going to be friends with them. I've never met half of them before. And it's just, I don't know, just be yourself. And I think we all do it. We kind of assume these roles in different situations you know, that was my son with school. I'm sure there's a lot of people who enter like a conference or a networking space and they, they feel they need to be a particular way. I think everyone that I have met, whether it's through the podcast as a leader and through conference, it's the authenticity that almost gives them that air of leadership, that seniority. Um, and and I believe in them, everything that they say to me. I want to follow them. I- I, I really like that. Yeah, I think that that openness and transparency is 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 critical. I mean, I, as you were saying that, then I was thinking about two conversations we've had. So we had the conversation with John Lee's about soft networking, mm. and we also had the conversation when with with Becky Glover when I kind of confessed the fact that I hate networking and and the the, the link between the two. And I think that within that it is you kind of like put on a face to do networking sometimes, you know, you put on your professional hat and actually the way that I've managed to cope with networking is the opposite, which is like, I'm just going to say how it is. I'm going to go in, like I was at an event relatively recently and I went into the room full of people and I just said to the first person, I say, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. Can I talk to you? <laughs> yeah. And actually that, that honesty from, from my perspective made me feel relief because I wasn't pretending but also opened up options because the person I spoke to said, well, I can introduce you to a few people. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and I, and I think that you you get benefits from openness that you don't necessarily expect. And one of them is that authenticity. Yeah, and, and you know, I know you well enough to say this, but I think if you tried to be the other mic and you went in and you said, you know, I love this yeah, place yeah. and I love this environment and isn't it great? And can, can I introduce myself to you? And you know, I think that the people would you know, smell a rat. Yeah. It'd, be like, it'd be like, I don't think he does. And there's something about this guy. Yeah. And it, and the thing is, that's the thing. People do, you yeah, know, know. It's much better to 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 be authentic. And then, you know, you'll you'll get the support. Like, yeah. You'll get the, the support. You'll, you know, people know who you are. People understand who you are. Especially in, you know, I think in the leadership circles that I've been in, people are generally supportive. Um you know, there is a lot of politics in the office, but when you're out of the office in space with peers, I think there's a lot of support. And if you actually put your hand up and say, this is me, but, you know, I could do with a bit of support here and here, you'll you'll find it. Absolutely. I, I mean, I think that le- leadership for me is a, and that authenticity is about uh, an, an openness really comes out when you see a multifunctional environment. That we've never, we, in most environments that we work in now are multifunctional. You've got a digital element, you've got a data element, but you've also got the specialist element. And you're not going to be an expert in all of them. So as a leader, you have to be humble and say, I, I don't know about that. Can you help me? Can you educate me in this? And then yeah. you still get to make the decisions. Yeah. But that that openness there, I think, really then makes you back back right back to the, the, the passion and the and the start. It, it makes you much more accessible as a leader. And much more inspirational. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm conscious of time. Um, yeah, that's the buzzword bingo. <laughs> um, and I would love to ask the audience to do something at this point. So we have an email podcast at generationcfo.com who produced this podcast. And I would love to know from you, you know, who your favourites were, whether you recognise those sort of four areas that we talked about, you know, the journey, the passion, the change or risk, 
and the authenticity. And if you, you have heard of um, other speakers out there who we haven't interviewed so far, um, who kind of fit this bill, then um, we'd, we'd love to hear from them. And we'll do our best to get them onto the podcast and to talk directly to us. Because at the moment, we do all, all of our recruitment ourselves. But, you know, we would love to hear from you and the people that you want to hear from as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed that one. Again, that was, uh, I don't know where we are in the world, but probably somewhere on on a, on a beach right now. This is a, a special that we recorded before we went on holiday. Um, but thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, thank you, Mike. Thanks, everyone. And remember, it's not all about the numbers. Boop, 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 boop.